background as a conventional sources of energy coal petroleum and natural gas yesterday we started just as a petroleum petroleum which has attracted to the crude oil crude oil through drilling petroleum extracted through <coughs> crude oil crude oil crude oil it extracted to the crude oil through and crude oil extracted to the drilling drilling process of mining drilling d r i l l i n g d r i l l i n g drilling to the process of a drilling it has extracted <coughs> petroleum is generally crude oil is generally their impurities are separate in at the oil refineries oil refineries are places where the impurities of a crude oil separated and a different number of products are extracted like as petrol diesel naphtha jet fuel gasoline <clears throat> coke lubricants etc synthetic rubber etc So such kind of products are extracted in oil refineries through the crude oil, through crude oil. Petroleum is known as a yellow gold, gold for its high value, high value in an economy. Presently, as a automobile industry has a base upon a petroleum products, automobile industries dependent on a petroleum products. petrochemical industries petrochemical industries which are obtain their raw material from the oil refineries like as the fertilizers cosmetics these are known as a noodle industry petrochemical industries are known as the noodle industry n o d a l n o d a l why because their products are used in a synthetic textiles fertilizers rubbers and in numerous chemical industries that's why these are known as a petrochemical industries are known as a nodal industries n o d a l nodal industries petroleum the occurrence of a petroleum in india is associated with the fault traps and anticlines in a sedimentary rocks formations of a tertiary period tertiary age of period <coughs> at that time as a <clears throat> fossils the which were trapped in a layers of a, in layers of the anticlines of a cold structures which now as rich in a oil and those areas where as a oil has extracted these are also known for the these are also known for the extraction of a natural gas extraction of natural gas these regions are also rich in a extraction of natural gas now the in 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 our country petroleum is generally extracted to the three important regions three important regions three offshore mining states are there mining positions are there through which as a petroleum crude oil extracted in our country crude oil extracted in our country the first one is a maharashtra in maharashtra in maharashtra in maharashtra as the bombay high maharashtra and arabian sea bombay high b o m b a y bombay high alia bet it is one of the islands of mumbai a l i a b e t a l i a b e t a l i a b e t alia bet and the third one is a basin b a w s e i n b a w s e i n b a w s e i n second one in assam in assam in assam 
एन असम डिगबोई डी आई जी बी ओ आई डी आई जी बी ओ आई डी आई जी बी ओ आई अगेन डी आई जी बी ओ आई सेकेंड इन असम सेकेंड इन असम नहर कटिया एन ए एच ए आर के ए टी आई ए एन ए एच ए आर के ए टी आई ए एन ए एच ए आर के ए टी आई ए नहर कटिया Now the third offshore mine, offshore location in India, offshore location in India, known for the extraction of a petroleum, known for extraction of petroleum, is Gulf of Cambay in Gujarat. Gulf of Cambay, C A M B A Y, C A M B A Y in Gujarat. C A M B A Y in Gujarat. Clear? Can be in Gujarat. So demand for the oil and the oil products is <clears throat> constantly raising. As for the increasing the population, the number of automobile automobiles vehicles are increasing. As for this, the demand of oil is day by day increasing. So we need to import. India has imported their sixty percentage of oil directly from the OPEC industries. Six zero percentage of total oil imported from OPEC industries. O P E I sorry O P E C oil producing eastern countries. Oil producing eastern countries, which constitutes as Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, U A E. From these countries, that group India completes its sixty percentage of oil consumption, oil demand completes to the OPEC industries. This was as regarding as the regarding the <clears throat> crude oil or petroleum. Now the third one as a natural gas, natural gas. The regions which are known for the extraction of a crude oil, these are also known for extraction of a natural gas. Both are lies in a. Same areas, natural gas is associated mostly with all deposits and even without it. It is a one of the main industrial raw material in a petrochemical industries. Petrochemical industries. It is considered an environment friendly fuel because of the low carbon dioxide emission through the low carbon dioxide. Emission through the natural gas as compared to the petroleum, as compared to petroleum, as compared to petroleum. The main areas of a natural gas reserves are the Krishna Godavari Basin in Andhra Pradesh, Krishna Godavari Basin in Andhra Pradesh, <coughs> Krishna Godavari Basin. In Andhra Pradesh, second Krishna Godavari Basin in Andhra Pradesh, second Gulf of Cambay in Gujarat, <coughs> Gulf of Cambay in Gujarat, third Mumbai offshore fields in Maharashtra, Mumbai offshore mines in. Offshore fields in Maharashtra. Offshore fields in Maharashtra. Gas reserves are also located in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Jaisalmer in Rajasthan. Jaisalmer in Rajasthan and Kaveri Basin of Tamil Nadu. <coughs> Kaveri Basin in Tamil Nadu. Kaveri Basin in Tamil Nadu. <clears throat> in our country, gas is generally transported through the pipeline transportation. Pipeline transportation. In this process, as India's longest pipeline, India's longest gas pipeline, 
longest gas pipeline is HVG. H stands for Hazira. H stands for Hazira. Hazira. V stands for Vijaypur. Vijaypur. J stands for Jagdishpur. Jagdishpur. India's longest gas pipeline. Its total length is 1700 kilometers. 1700 kilometers. 1700 kilometers. Hazira, Vijaypur, and Jagdishpur. Hazira, Vijaypur, and Jagdishpur. <clears throat> Hazira, Vijaypur, and Jagdishpur. Jagdishpur. Clear? India's longest gas pipeline through as the gas has transported. In previous years, <clears throat> in 2011, India signed one of the treaties with the Iran to import their gas directly from Iran towards India, but still as it's spending. The reason is that uh, liquefied petroleum gas for the vehicles, running of the vehicles as a CNG, compressed natural gas. Compressed natural gas. Compressed natural gas. Except these three conventional sources of energy, one is also, which is as an eco-friendly, which is all, which is the hydro power stations, hydroelectricity. This is also categorized under the conventional sources of energy with coal, petroleum, and natural gas, hydroelectricity. Hydroelectricity is also categorized under the <clears throat> Hydroelectricity also categorized under the conventional sources of energy. <clears throat> the electricity which is generated through the hydro power stations is produced by the force of a falling and a running water, which turns turbines to convert into the power, which turns, <clears throat> which turns turbine to convert into the power. Hydro power is also a clean source and a renewable in nature. It is as inexpensive and non-exhaustible in nature. Non-exhaustible. After the independence of our country, a large number of multi-purpose river building projects built by the government to complete necessity of power. Necessity of power. But Still, as a large demand of electricity is increasing day by day, day by day, that excessive need of electricity has complete to the nuclear power stations and other sources of energy which are categorized under non-conventional sources of energy. Non-conventional sources of energy. After independence, the first dam which was built on a river, it was as a Bhakra Nangal on Satwaj. Bhakra Nangal Dam, multi-purpose river valley projects completes the necessity of energy. They completes the necessity of a power energy <clears throat> through the dams. Bhakra Nangal Dam on a Satluj, Hirakud on a Manedi River, Damodar River Valley Project on a Damodar, Sadar Sarova Dam on Narnda River, Metur on Kaveri, Nagarjuna Sagar on Krishna, Tungbhadra on its tributary Tungbhadra River, Tungbhadra River, Teri Dam on Ganga, so such number of a dams built after the independence to complete the necessity of a electricity. To complete the necessity of electricity. Clear? Now the next one has the non-conventional sources of energy. Any questions still there? <clears throat> non-conventional sources of energy. Any questions? Energies. Those sources of energy used by the humans in a dose, used by the humans in a recent in time. Energy based upon the exhaustible sources such as the coal, mineral oil and the nuclear minerals will not last long. So efforts are being made to the obtain energy from inexhaustible sources. These sources of energy cover the solar, tidal, geothermal, hot springs, biomass, and animal waste and wind energy also. Such sources of energy are the 
eco friendly which do not cause as a pollution in our environment in our environment in which of us is a solar energy solar energy as per the india's tropical conditions <clears throat> tropical and subtropical conditions are favorable for growth of a favorable of solar energy India's tropical and subtropical conditions are favorable for growth of solar energy. Solar energy. There is a ample potential for production and utilization of solar energy in our country. In our country, as solar energy has utilized to the photovoltaic technology. Photovoltaic technology. Photovoltaic. Technology. Photovoltaic technology used to transform the insulation into the energy. Incoming solar radiation converts it into the electricity. It is as especially popular. In rural areas and small towns of Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh, and Madhya Pradesh, the largest solar power station, the last largest solar power station located at the Bhagwanpur in Nimaj of Madhya Pradesh, B H A G W A N P U R, Bhagwanpur of Nimuch district and double E M U C H N double E M U C H Nimuch district of Madhya Pradesh Bhagwanpur place Nimuch district state Madhya Pradesh Madhya Pradesh solar energy is generally used for cooking pumping cooking pumping heating of water and street lighting etc etc cooking pumping heating of water street lighting etc etc <clears throat> next as a wind energy wind energy the potential of wind energy is also more in our country in our country as per our conditions a long coastline what is as a total length of a coastline of india arman rule number 4 raise your hand arman raise your hand yes arman what is the total length of india's coastline from gujarat to west well nautical miles sorry repeat sorry uh, sorry any bata And six kilometers long coastline, seven five one six point six kilometers long coastline from Gujarat to the West Bengal. Coastal parts of Gujarat, Maharashtra. Coastal parts of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal. Seven five one six point six kilometers long coastline favorable for growth of the wind energy and the tidal energy. Wind energy and tidal energy. And meanwhile, as with this, the Thar Desert areas are also supportive for the growth of a supportive for the growth of wind energy in our country. Wind energy in our country. The largest largest wind farm. Located as a, at a Tamil Nadu, largest wind farm located in Tamil Nadu district of Nagar Coil, N A G A R, N A G A R C O I L, C O I L, Nagar Coil near Madurai. near madurai known for the largest wind farm in india 
wind farm in India. Another important wind farm is located in a Jaisalmer in Rajasthan. Jaisalmer in Rajasthan. Jaisalmer in Rajasthan. <clears throat> Jaisalmer in Rajasthan. Next, geothermal energy. Third non-conventional sources of energy. Geothermal. G-E-O. Geothermal. Geothermal, Earth's inter internal heat. Earth's internal heat used as a source for the generation of electricity. Generation of electricity, power. Generation of electricity. So geothermal energy is refers to the heat and electricity produced by using the heat from the interior of the Earth. Interior of the Earth. Underground water in active volcanic regions gets heated in contact with the heated rocks. Steam pressure builds and rises to Earth's surface. This steam energy can be converted into the electricity. It can be converted into the electricity. Converted into the electricity. The largest farm has located in a Puga Valley. P-U-G-A. Puga Valley of Ladakh in Jammu and Kashmir. Puga Valley of Ladakh in Jammu and Kashmir. Second, Parvati Valley near Manikaran. Parvati Valley near Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh. Parvati, P A R V A T I. Parvati Valley. Parvati Valley in Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh, known for a generation of a geothermal energy. Geothermal energy. Next, as a biogas, next non conventional sources of energy as a biogas, farm waste, farm waste, animal, animal waste human excreta, these are the important sources of uh, <clears throat> sources which are used to, which are used to produce biogas, biogas for domestic purposes. In rural areas, decomposition of organic matter yields gas with more thermal efficiency than kerosene or other forms of a conventional sources of energy. Kerosene or charcoal. Biogas plants can be set up at a municipal and a cooperative and individual levels. In a gober gas plants, exclusively using the cow dung in rural areas, produce the gas. Such gas plants give the double benefits in the form of energy and manure also. One as the energy has obtained afterwards the extraction of a gas. The remain has used the, as the fertilizer to increase the productivity in a natural way, organic farming. So biogas plants are the vast scope for the present and the future also, to which we, uh, we can return that which we obtain from our nature. We can return as a fertility to the soils also. Next, non-conventional sources of energy as a tidal energy. Tidal energy. Tidal energy. So coastal regions are favorable for a generation of a tidal energy. Tides which are caused due to the gravitational pull of sun and moon. Gravitational pull of sun and moon favorable for favorable for generation of a electricity. In that state, their water has rises and falls. That process is the tide. Under that state of our tides, if there are turbines located on a coastal regions, when water rises and falls on a such number of a turbines, with the rotation of a turbines, it helps to generation of electricity. India's long coastline of a 7516.6 kilometers long coastline, favorable for growth of a tidal energy, but still the tidal energy as the potential resource in our country. It, ha it is a, it has a potential, but 
unable to complete our energy need at present. Clear, Saksham? Saksham, it is as an important source of energy in a present. Helium and thorium now as a categorized under the reserves, which are saving for a future. We completing our need of nuclear fuel, uranium and thorium, which now as imported from US, United States of America towards India. We are saving our uh, such number of uh, reserves, reserves for the future for sustainable development. Sustainable development, the important nuclear power stations in India are Tarapur in Maharashtra, Tarapur in Maharashtra, Tarapur in Maharashtra, Rawat Bhatta in Rajasthan, R A W A T B H A T A Rawat Bhatta in Rajasthan, Kalpakkam in Tamil Nadu, Kalpakkam K A L P A double T A M, Kalpakkam in Tamil Nadu, Narora in Uttar Pradesh. Narora in Uttar Pradesh, Kaga in Karnataka, Kaga in Karnataka, Kakrapara in Gujarat, K A K R A, K A K R A P A R A, Kakrapara, K A K R A P A R A. Kakra Para in Gujarat. I am again repeating as a Tarapur, Maharashtra, Narura, Uttar Pradesh, Rawat Bhatta, Rajasthan, Kakra Para, Gujarat, Kalpakkam, Tamil Nadu, Rawat Bhatta, Rajasthan, Rawat Bhatta, Rajasthan, Kaga, Karnataka, K A I G A, Kaga in Karnataka. This was our chapter, Minerals and Energy Resources. Minerals and Energy Resources.